In the House of the Dragon series, huge changes were made to the events and characters leading up to the Dance of Dragons. Some were good, like making King of the Series a sympathetic character, and some were bad, like making Christian Cole have to kill anytime he's in an awkward situation. In this video, we're going to go over the worst theories we've seen on the internet for potential changes in the upcoming seasons for House of the Dragon. One of these theories, if true, is going to piss a lot of fans off and fundamentally change the story. All right, before we get into it, though, let us know in the comments what your craziest theories are that you've heard about this show. Or not even craziest, maybe most mundane and just worst. Like the worst thing possible for the story that wouldn't make any sense, especially if you've read the book, because that's what we're about to go into here. And spoiler warning up front, we will be going into what happens within Fire and Blood. So we will be spoiling some events that occur within season two, three, or four of House of Dragon. But actually, we might not be spoiling it because they might be changing actually what happens. But right. the first worst theory that we've heard people talk about is that Jace and, you know, Jace Valarian and Cregan Stark are actually going to be in a gay relationship together once he goes to Winterfell. This is a combination of two things that occur within Jace's trip up to Winterfell. One was he actually falls in love with Sarah Snow, which is Cregan Stark's bastard sister. Allegedly. And, and then the pack of ice and fire is, you know, Jace and Cregan are become boys. And they're like, dude, we're boys. Let's seal this in, you know, in that blood, but like in a marriage pack. And, oh, uh, Jace's daughter will marry Cregan's oldest son, I think. That's the, the yeah, that's breakdown of it. Right? On, right? Yeah, listen, listen, well, first of all, first of all, just to give this theory a little bit of grace, I guess, this whole secretly marrying Sarah Snow thing, I wouldn't trust the word of a dwarf, all right? And Mushroom's not even in the House of the Dragon so far. So, hey. Well, no, no, it's not even a dwarf. It's a shitster dwarf. Like, he's, it's not even the right. dwarf thing. It's just a shitster. He, he's like a little uh, menace to the, the court, except, you know. I do miss that mushroom's not in it, honestly. I wish he was in it. He is, he, he's evil. He's evil. He's got bad intentions. I don't trust shitsters. I don't trust dwarves. Maybe in real life, but in this franchise, I don't think so. Not in Presbyterian <laughs> overall. But I think this this theory is hilarious. But it's just not right. It's not going to happen. It's like the stupidest theory ever. I can't believe people talk about this. Yeah, it doesn't really impact the story all that much because, spoiler alert, you know, Jace is going to die in most likely this season. And then nothing really happens. Cregan Stark doesn't really come down to Winterfell, or should be down from Winterfell to King's Landing until basically the end of the dance. So it really has no ramifications or changes. Kind of like how, you know, Lenor goes sailing with the boys. It doesn't really impact the story, or at least we wouldn't think it impacts the story, when it, except when it comes to dragon bonding with uh, Sea Smoke. It really has no change to it, right? No, it does. I mean, I think that in the Lenor front, I actually think it helps out his character because, you know, he's, we're living vicariously through him. We all just want to escape and go hang with the boys. Not necessarily escape, in a gay way. Escape but, Rhaenyra. I got to get out of this relationship. Escape the evil queen, man. But, uh, but yeah, no, I think that this doesn't really play a big impact on the story. I don't think it's necessarily like a checkbox thing for a, like a, you, you know, getting a gay cast member in there because we have so, many, so much of it already. I don't think it takes away or detracts in that front. But it's just a strange change to make. I guess maybe for consistency's sake, like in all fairness, when Jace goes up there, Cregan is taken by Jace, I believe, because he reminds him of his younger brother. Yes. So maybe yep. there's some kind of like a, you know, moral relativism. Like the Targaryens aren't the only incestuous family in <laughs> Westeros. It happens in the North and the South. So maybe, you know, right. just a little bit. Of, otherwise, I can't see any reason. And that's some that's some far reaching symbolism, if that's the case. It, that, that would ruin it for me, too, a little bit that. If in the books, you know, Cregan likes Jace because he reminds him of his younger brother. It's like, oh, man, my, uh, you know, he, he I forgot how he died. His younger brother died. But, um, you know, I, I'm going to bond with him. And then it actually develops into some something sexual. It's just like, oh, like that's, <laughs> yeah, it's you know, so it's like odd. marrying some person that looks like your mom or something. And you're like, oh, what, what's going on here? Dude, that does happen. What, what if they what if they look like you? Is it weird to marry somebody that looks like you? But what like, what if you don't have. A, OK, like, I'll be honest. Don boy, you don't resemble your family. No, it's just a lot like you do a little bit, but not a lot, especially compared to your younger and older brother. But what if you met somebody that looked like you? Would you? Is that weird oh, to marry dude. them? No, that's perfectly natural. If I anything, that's too. supernatural, right? That's, that's like yeah, that's, that. That is awesome. If I could marry uh, a female Dawn, I think I'd be living on heaven on that's earth. Perfect honestly. specimen. <laughs> OK, well, uh, something else about this theory. Do you think it is bonded do they have like some sort of other bond because they go beyond the wall and they see something spooky scary? You know what I'm spooky saying? Spooky scary. Yeah. I mean, well, 
I don't know what it could be. I can't imagine. There's nothing mm, that crazy mm, up mm, there. Mm, we see it. We, <laughs> we see in Game of Thrones, man. What's up there that's so scary? What do they run into? The White Walkers or something? What if they see something up there and like, ooh, we got to make this pack. ancestor? Like that's not scary. That's awesome. Like they run into Craster's ancestor. Like that's oh, maybe okay. where they learn their <laughs> their pack device and fire ways. I guess like the true pack, the salty sweet one that we're talking about here. But uh, a White Walker? Come on. What's what's there to be scared of a White Walker? And if they do run into him, are they not going to tell anybody about it when they return? Because that's a huge change to the story if they do that. Right. Yeah. I mean, like, what is uh, Jace going to see like a White Walker? Then he's like, dude, we have to make this bond or like this bond with the North. We have to defend the North. Uh, trust me, as soon as I get down there, I'm going to like tell my mother about this thing. <laughs> Gets down there, immediately dies. He's like, damn, dude. dude. Can you imagine how shoehorned that would be in? Like, oh my God, they were so close to learning about the White Walkers 250 years ago. And then, you know, rewind a few years to the end of Game of Thrones and the White Walkers were pieces of shit that die like bitches. It's like, that would be. It should be such a bad story element. I hope to God they don't do this. This is a terrible theory. I think we're going to do maybe another video about like just the White Walkers in general, like their impact potentially in uh, season two, because I think we've heard rumblings. Spoiler alert again. I think we, yeah. we've seen behind the scenes things for not maybe not, not White Walkers, but the whites, you know, the zombie like form uh, that people take after they die. Mm -hmm. Those might be in or most likely will be in season two of House of the Dragon. But it, it by the time in the. We'll, we'll, we'll just do another video on it. I don't want to. Yeah, no, you, you know, know what? You're, yeah, we will do another video, but you're saying this. It's like, man, maybe they will do something like that. They might go beyond the wall because what excuse would there be to have a white south of the wall? And then we get some random uh, distraction, some other plot with characters we don't have anything to do with right now beyond the wall. There, mm -hmm. Where is there a place for that in House of the Dragon season two, especially since this series moves so fast paced? You know, I, I really can't imagine a way. Maybe this is exactly what happens. This theory might have some credentials behind it not that it's good but it might i, I do want to see sarah snow in it. and i actually do want that relationship with jason uh sarah snow because sarah snow for jace may be like this kindred spirit where they're like oh dude you know i i grew up in king's landing or mostly dragonstone but you know i was looked at as a bastard even though i was a legitimate or legitimized basically by everybody around me they did look at me as bastards and she's a bastard right so he might just be you think uh, you think Sarah Snow's a quarter black, just like Jace is? <laughs> I think it goes without saying. Everybody's a quarter black in this show. Yeah, as of yeah right just now. like Jace. So this other one, I saw this one, and it sounded like some person actually maybe leaked this. So this might actually be a huge reveal. So huge spoiler warnings. But Aegon is killed. Aegon the Second is killed by poison. And no, no one officially like takes the blame like outright, but uh, Larry strong is the one that's really executed for this. Corliss is not executed for potentially any sort of, you know, mischievous deeds he was doing around that time period. But in this leaked segment, I saw Alicent is the one that either tells Larry's or does it herself and kills Aegon poisons him after she learns about Aegon killing her friend Rhaenyra uh -huh. and uh, to, to give a little more credence to this I guess Alicent and Rhaenyra will be meeting each other in episode 8 of season 2 so the, the last episode of this season they're going to come face to face with each other which is just another dumb thing I, they don't need to come face to face with each other. And they're going to come together at King's Landing when eventually Rhaenyra takes King's Landing. But I don't need to see that anymore. And I hate this theory. And it just, I think it really just undermines, it just puts their relationship front and center the whole time. And it, it should be broken. They don't need to mend it or have any sort of other aspects to it. I don't know what you think. Well, it's like it's like a Hollywoodification of the show, right? It's like making all these connections where it doesn't right. need to be. It's like uh, treating the audience like they're forgetting about things. Like, you know, yeah, this war is going on. But guys, do you remember why the war is happening? Do you remember? Do you remember? Because they can't do real flashbacks in the show. That's not really how it works. So they got to do stuff like this. But they make these two. I just I don't see a reason for it. And as far as the death goes of uh, Aegon, and it's really cool that we don't know. Because in a time like this, like a medieval time, where they don't have the, the forensic ability that they have now, there would be a lot of high profile deaths that don't necessarily have. NCIS Westeros. Yeah, yeah, NCIS Westeros. Like there's not there's not going to be that. You can't zoom and enhance in the red keep and it's like <laughs> there might be a lot of things that have to go unsolved and i think that's really cool man it's um and it also shows how corrupt history can be when it's written right it's like they're gonna maybe write down in the history books who exactly did it if larry strong mm -hmm. goes down for this or corliss or whoever they write and they're executed for it i mean for sure the history books are gonna reflect like oh yeah larry's was executed because he for sure did this thing right and so let's well, that's what Fire and Blood is kind of like. Yeah, it's mostly pointing it is, at it's layers, exactly yeah. that. But if we see it now on screen that it's something different, 
it's going to give us more clarity where we don't need it and it's going to apply retroactively to the book too like i understand there's a lot of changes between the book and the show already like king v and stuff like that but i think when it comes to a un undeveloped point like this from the book that didn't give us a straight answer now people are going to be able to rightfully apply this to the book and you can say well you can't do that it's a different continuity and they're gonna say well why not you know it's a bad but i agree with the people who say it's a different continuity it's like don't apply that retroactively but now that's just going to be the answer I, I really don't like that it's just lazy yeah, I think it's lazy. I, I do like having the source material there to pull from. And George's, even in the way he writes uh, the Song of Ice and Fire series, you know, the main one that Game of Thrones is based off of, those ones are from first person point of view. So right. there could be error whenever someone sees something a certain way. Like, you know, he says some of his most difficult chapters he writes are for brand because he has to put himself in a child's perspective and how they would interpret some events. You know, like, how does he interpret. Uh, you know, Jamie and Cersei when he gets up there. He doesn't say, like, you know, uh, Jamie going to town, you know, balls deep in Cersei. Right. You know, it's yeah, like digging for more and more and more. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like whatever rustling, right? You know, he has to think of things like that and, and the way the magic system works, anyways. He, he gives you room for it to interpret and have some, you know, uh, flaws in his uh, narratives as he's, you know, flushing out this world. So it, it does have that ability that you know any of a song of ice and fire series has that there can be some room for error and like some interpretation but i do want i just don't want allison to do it i wouldn't mind if corliss did it but i don't want allison to do it because i just feel I, like it's such like going back on her character is that like a character her character arc is i cared about my kids more than my friend and at the end of it i just get revenge for my friend i'm like dude i don't know like rhaenyra i want rhaenyra to be mago or tits i don't want her to be the oh i was just misunderstood and i'm just a victim of circumstances and i want allison to be a bitch too i don't want allison to be looked at as like oh look she's like literally the mother reincarnated on earth here uh from the seven like she's so beautiful and so perfect in every way even though that's what i look at that's how i actually see her well yeah when you see her standing looking at that body of water like how could you see her anything different dude but uh, yeah the the seven I totally agree, but I don't want. I again, I, I don't I'm not even okay with Corliss doing because it, it, Allison is the worst pick. It's the worst picked thing. We don't want the most, but I don't want anybody to be revealed that way. Like in Game of Thrones, one of the few big mistakes I think that they made pre, you know, season six, seven, eight, whatever, was when they showed Melisandre give birth to that like devil thing, like that specter shadow, you know, yeah. goblin with a knife, and then went and killed Renly. Like it would have been way cooler if Renly just kind of witness something in the shadow and we don't see what it is and then he dies and it's not mm-hmm. necessarily connected but then stannis believes that he caused it or whatever and he takes pride over that and melisandre reaffirms it you know something like that I, we just don't need to see it and i don't need to hand, have my hand held it just it's totally it's totally a divergence from that first person thing you were talking about in the books and not in a good way dude it's just not in a good way we don't need to see it the show was super successful and the previous show was super successful and it wasn't because we got our hands held it just wasn't now let's go to the last theory, the worst right, theory. Right. So the worst theory by far that we've seen. Now, this is a stretch, so that's probably why it's so bad here. But uh, Lenor comes back from Essos, from Sam with the Boys. Yep. He comes back as Adam of Hall because Lenor now is a faceless man. He went over oh, to Bravos and became man. a faceless man. And now he's Adam of Hall, and he, that's the reason why he's able to bond oh, cool. with his dragon this whole time. Dude, how cool what do you think about that? this? How badass is that? Are you kidding? Okay, the most, the most unrealistic thing about this is that he's going to give up his life of freedom, chilling with the boys all day, every day to come back and fight in a war for a woman that he should hate. He should right. hate. Ruined his life, effectively. Carl's still around, I assume. And if not, you know, good. He got free from that guy, too. He shouldn't be coming back. Adam of Hull? It's like, why? It seems like such a huge workaround for very little gain, right? On Lenor's part. Like, what is he right. gaining from doing this? Yeah, I know he would. Uh, well, I mean, he would have to assume there is an Adam of Hall, right? There would be an Adam of Hall, and yes. then Lainor goes, "I'm going to assume his face." So maybe he kills this guy, probably, right? Assumes his, his family, face, yeah. yeah, and then uh, is like, "Okay, I'm just gonna uh, be there so I can actually fight with my dad, you know, for the Dance of Dragons." But I can't come back as myself. And there is this this conversation after this big battle at Dragonstone. And it's a huge, like, bunch of casualties. They think uh, Viserys II actually dies in it. He ends up not dying. J- that's one where Jace dies. Adam of Hull goes to Corliss's quarters privately and has a conversation, and, like, no one knows what it was about. So that's like, even more, maybe, whatever, room for them to interpret, like, oh, what is Adam of Hull he talking about? He told him that he's really lean. Or- and, you know- he ripped off his face and said, 
Daddy, I know I won the lottery and I could have been there with the boys, but I'd rather be here with you, like, dude. Oh, this, great. Uh, this well, you know what is? It reminds me of like all the normie fans out there would love to see a faceless man in the series so badly. And there's there's room for one to be in there, but it's just like like if a faceless man poisoned Aegon, that'd be kind of cool, right? Like someone paid a faceless man. People have been known to pay faceless men to do these kind of things before. I, dude, well, I don't need to see it in Westeros if they went on some divergent. Uh... Divergent best movie ever. Some divergent plot point right over in Essos, and uh -huh. we get to see some stuff going on over there. Sure, I'd like to see a faceless man there, but I don't need to see necessarily a faceless man from Essos doing stuff over in Westeros. I don't see like if we see Corlys going on an expedition and spinoff series, that would be yeah. a much better spot. I think I, I don't really right. see a place for it. even in. There's no way. Like I don't think that we would need to see. I don't think that it would be we, good. We to don't see need a to see man just... kill Aegon either. Like, but you're right. I mean, it'd be better than Allison doing it, right? But definitely better than that, right? But um, I'm just saying, like, if they're playing the hits. They got Winterfell. Yeah. They go Faceless Man. They have, White Walkers. you know, what? Yeah, White Walkers. They have, uh, you know, we have Boris, basically the Giga Chad version of Robert. Actually, like, he's, not Giga Chad, just, so bad. just regular Chad version of him. Robert's pretty yeah. Giga Chad as it is. Yeah, he's pretty Giga Chad. It's, it's mainly attitude. But uh, no, see, well, listen, the one thing I will give this theory is that it's kind of like there's this amb ambiguity. Of who Adam of Hull's father is. I mean, it's pretty clearly Corliss, I guess. But it's right. my understanding, like they try to pass it off as Lenor's kid. I'm not sure if that's another mushroom statement. They're not, so you know, take that for what you want. But uh, I guess if they're both confirmed to be Corliss's kid, I guess why not one and the same? It could be something they could add to the show, and it would. Right. I, I just I'm trying to think of a way they could execute this in a battle or in a behind the scenes thing. Like, can you can you think of a way they could execute this reveal? To where an audience member like you or me would be like, whoa, okay, that makes so much sense now. Like, what could that benefit the story? Can you think of anything? <sighs> there, there's no benefit to it. And that's with all these series, too. There's, it would be, the Allison one, I think it'd be character regression. I, I don't want to see, maybe not regression, but it would just be. What's well, a contrivance is what betrayal. it is. Betrayal. For the Lenor and then this Jace one, too, the theories we talked about so far. These two, they could just, they could occur and they have no impact on the story. So if anything, they're just, uh, uh, just for shits and giggles, I guess, right? Because, like, Lanor, Lanor being sailed off instead of being killed does what to change the story well, in the the season one, one, right? Like, it, it did, has no impact. The the, the story with, um, well, when we change King Viserys' like, actual character arc from the books to the season one, it makes you invested in him. So then you, when you feel like, oh, he was, like, when you look at the books, you go, dude, the series is so stupid. What was he thinking this whole time? But when you watch this show, you're like, dude, I love this guy. I love, yeah, I love this guy. He's my dude. boy. My boy, my dad, everything. I think the one thing that they could maybe try to do, or I, okay, motivation behind it could be maybe they think that the audience sees Lenor as like a piece of shit, right? Like a bitch for going along with this theory and just running off and abandoning his parents. Because remember, his sister just died. And so for his parents to have to feel the weight now of him dying as well. Yeah. Uh, like realistically the situation was like hey lenor we want to fake your death and send you off and if you say no to this then we're just going to kill you anyway and do it for real so in that way i don't think lenor was bad but they didn't explicitly spell that out for us so if maybe they think audiences think it was really his decision to go off and sail away in the sunset with carl right yeah i think that maybe him then coming back as adam of hull i don't know why he did this faceless man routine but if he came back maybe he's like uh, regaining his honor dying in battle alongside his family like in a situation that he abandoned i guess right. maybe like that's, that's the biggest stretch i can think of and then if he revealed himself to corliss maybe corliss would be happy but like you said earlier he would have had to kill adam of hull unless he also faked adam of hull's death right and then had adam of hull go take his place with carl maybe adam of hull oh, was also dude. a faceless man Oh, they parent trapped for the Dance of Dragons. Dude, it's classic. Just... I would love Adam. <laughs> what if Adam of Hall's played by the same guy who played Lenor? <laughs> well, they're, they, that's the thing. They, they're not. The guy, Adam of Hall, is played by a different actor. <laughs> um, they, they've cast it, but that, that would be funny. It would be funny if they actually had him <laughs> cast it as that and they didn't like address it at all. You know, like yeah. he wasn't a faceless man or anything. He's just like, isn't that Lenor's actor? It's so stupid. Okay. Anyway, yeah, no, that's the worst theory. That's the worst theory I've seen. It's the worst theory I've heard. If it happens in season two, I'm not watching season three. I lied. I'm watching season three, but it'd be a dumb theory. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this and smash that like button. Or not. We don't care. <laughs>